Good morning, Connect Church. It's so good to be here on this Sunday morning. If you'll stand to your feet with me. Come on, who's excited to be in the house of God this morning? Are you excited to be back to worship the King of Kings? Come on. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, God, and we just thank you. We adore you for who you are, for being so good, God. We just thank you for allowing us to remember, God, during this season that you are the reason that we're standing, that you're the reason why we're breathing. And the reason why we're here this morning, God, is to give you thanks, to give you all the honor and all the glory for who you are, God. We love you. We thank you. And Connect Church says, Amen. Come on, give God a big praise right there where we are at. Come on. Put your hands together with me and say, And come let us worship our King. And come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done See how His love overcomes He has done great things Do you believe that with me this morning? He has done great things Come on! Oh, heal our head You conquer the grave You free the captain And break every chain, oh God you have done great things We dance in your freedom Awaken alive Oh Jesus, our Savior Your name lifted high Oh God You have done great things Come on, declare this out and say You've been faithful through every storm You'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things yeah. And I know when you'll do it again For your promise is yes and amen You will do great things And God you do great things Oh heal of heaven you conquer the grave you think free captain and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your feet, awaken alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Come on, we say. In God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Yeah, come on, lift your voice and say it one more time, we say, hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you done great things we say oh, hallelujah God above it all hallelujah God unshakable hallelujah you have done great things come on let's declare it one more time we say in hallelujah Come on, do you believe that with me this morning? Yeah. And I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder 
than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Yes, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, and hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. Come on, let's raise a hallelujah in this place. Here we go. And I raise a hallelujah. With everything inside of me, I raise a hallelujah. Yes, I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Yes, fear you lost your hold on me. Come on, what's he say? I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemy. Yes, sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a mighty. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Yes, sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemy. Sing a little louder. Yes, sing a little louder. My heaven is a melody. Yes, sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Yes, sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Yes, death is defeated. The King is alive. Yes, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. Do you believe that the King is alive? Do you believe with me that God is the one who died and rose on the third day and that's why we are standing here this morning because when he rose up we rose up and because he has the victory we have the victory and so there is no darkness in hell there is nothing that can hold us down come on let your voice and say before I spoke a word that you were singing over me. Come on and 
say You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathe all life in me You have been so, so kind to me Let's, let's sing that again Before I spoke a word You were singing over me You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathe your life in me You have been so, so kind to me Come on Good enough, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Only overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. I was your fault, still your love off of me. Come on, declare it out and say, You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me yeah. Only overwhelming, never ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down But still I'm found These are not In my good enough and I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Only overwhelming Never ending Reckless love of God You know what I love about the Lord is that Every time that I may find myself in a dark place where in a position that I don't know what to do God being light comes in and shines shines his glory upon me and I know for a fact that when you find yourself in that same position that he comes in and he shines with glory and he leads you out and he leads you into his glorious victory come on and we say there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after. There's no wall you won't kick down, line you won't tear down, coming after. Yeah, come on. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after. There's no wall you won't kick down, why you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on, if you believe it, come on, make it louder. There's no shadow you won't, yeah. Coming after me, yeah. There's no wall you won't, why you won't tear down. Come on, now if you believe it, come on. 
no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down fire you won't tear down coming after me worship him in this room for his goodness if you look back all over this year we can truly say thank you God for never leaving us thank you God for being good to us thank you for watching over us thank you for your mercy Jesus come on just take a minute right there all over this room and let's reflect on his goodness my champion and giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you won I am who you say I am you crown me with confidence I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all Cause when I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority That Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth, the miracles start to out. I have the authority. Yes, Jesus has given me. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth The miracles start waking up I have the authority Yes, Jesus has given me Come on, sing that with us this morning when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me And if you are 
my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated By the power of your name I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all I hope you guys understand that Because how powerful is that statement? that you are seated with Christ. You know, Ephesians, it says that he is seated far above principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness in high places. And then you go down in the first of the next chapter, and it says that we're seated in heavenly places with him. How powerful of a statement that is. You know, it's all about perspective. You know, when you're dealing with things, when you're dealing with issues, when you're going through things in life, it's all about perspective. What perspective are you taking? Are you looking at it from here like I don't know how I'm going to get through it? Or are you looking at it from up here? You know, when we were in Bible college many, many years ago, God put it to me this way. You know the little mazes that the, the mice run through? You know? You know, corn maze or something that you do on, on, on fall festivals and things. You know, you're always trying to find your way through it, right? Well, that's one perspective. But, but when the mice are trying to find their way through this thing, I mean, when you're looking down on something, come on, you're like, well, no, no just take a right. You know, not, not, take a left. You know what I mean? Now, I just go straight. No, no, not there. Go the next one. Right? Because you, you have a different perspective. So the perspective that we need to have in our life is God's perspective. We need to know that we're looking down upon our situation and that everything that is happening is a completely different perspective when you see it from God's perspective. See, we don't fight from a place of needing victory. Victory's already been given to us. Come on, we fight from a place of victory. It says fight the good fight of faith, right? Meaning we know we have it, it's already supplied, it's already there, we just gotta get to it. And that's where faith comes in. And as long as we're using faith, as long as we're pushing through faith, as long as we're doing the things that we need to do, we're pleasing God. Because faith pleases God. And I want you guys to know this morning, you're doing better than you think you are. Come on, you're doing better than you think you are. You're watching online, you're doing better than you think you are. God's already given you the victory. Just got to step into it. No matter what you're going through, you're doing better. And if you're not doing good this year, just wait till next year. Or next week, whichever way you want to say it. Last week of 2020, guys, did we ever think we would get here? Come on, with everything that has happened in life, with everything that was going on, I don't know about you guys, but I was like, Lord, you can come back in 2020. You know, just come on back, you know. Let's just have the rapture right now, you know. But we're making it through 2020. And this is what God's kind of put on my heart for next year. A new, a new year, a new you going deeper with God a new year a new you going deeper with God you know 2020 may have knocked us down a little bit come on may have set us back a little bit but it didn't take God by surprise amen it didn't take God by surprise may have took us by surprise but it didn't take God by surprise so you guys pray with me this morning. Father, we just thank you this morning. I thank you for every person, Father, that's in the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you that they are blessed abundantly above all they could ask, think, 
pray or even dream, Father. That your anointing is upon their lives, Father. Your anointing is upon the families, Father. Lord, I pray as we, we come into 2021, Father. Lord, that your anointing is stronger in the households, Father. That the marriages are strengthened, Father. The relationships are better than they were, Father. Lord, I thank you for your anointing upon every household of Connect Church, of every person that is connected with us, Father, that your anointing is upon that household. And Lord, I thank you that your blessings flow. And Father, right now, we, we pray for every person that has COVID. Lord, I thank you for your healing power that is reaching out. I thank you that they are healed whole, healthy, blessed, and prosperous, Father. I thank you that this disease cannot prosper, Father, but your healing power does. Father, we rebuke that, Father. We rebuke that disease from the devil, Father. And we speak healing into every life, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Y'all, give me a hand clap. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen, amen, amen. Will you guys take a seat, kind of give an air five to the row next to you? Here you go, Junior, right here. Come on. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, y'all ain't, yeah. Hey. Six feet, right? Hey. Good morning, Connect Church. I have missed you guys tremendously. It was not the same last week without anybody in here. That's right. I've missed you even more than he Wait. has. Wait. <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she threw me off with that. <laughs> Forgot where I was going now. <laughs> uh, you guys look amazing this morning. I'm so glad we're back. We still have... Um, a few people that are dealing with COVID, but we're going to keep them in prayer. Amen. We're going to keep showering people with prayer. And coming into this next year, this week, come on, we're just going to keep praying. Just going to keep pushing. Just going to keep going forward. Amen. We hope that everybody had a great Christmas. We hope that you guys just were blessed. I know we had a great Christmas. We're actually going to go back this week and see our families so you guys pray for us on our trip that we have a safe trip uh, we're going to go back and see mom and dad and mom and dad and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and everybody this week and uh, just bless those people so we just ask for your prayers for that um, man we just want to say if if you are here or watching online because we have a whole we have a whole bunch of people that watch online every week you know, and you guys are not part of a church. We just want to say, welcome home. We just want to say that, you know, we'll be your family. We'll be the ones that stand with you and pray with you and, and just shout victory with you. So just welcome home on that. So we've just got a couple of announcements, and then we have a guest speaker. Yes, we do. I which I am you. excited about. Me too. You too? <laughs> I think I'm more excited. <laughs> you think? She's probably more excited. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited about this because, um, uh, well, I'll talk about that in a second because it's kind of a little bit of a running joke, but we'll talk about it here in a minute. But uh, a couple of announcements that we wanted to make this morning. Next weekend, so we had a lot of people, you know, that signed up to, to do our next steps and to go through that so that you guys could serve in the church. And COVID kind of cut that out because... Farah ended up getting it and giving it to me and all that stuff. You know, it was just one of those things. Um, she says I got it first. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But, uh, but now that we're back and healthy, next Sunday we're going to start. It's the first Sunday of every month. We're going to have our next step. So if you were not able to attend, you can attend next week. We just ask that you sign up uh, so that we know who all is coming. Um, and if you did not come and, we, and you signed up for last time, we'll give you a call this week and just remind you and see if you guys want to come. So we just want to make sure you're blessed. So another thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead, and I did not tell the ushers this, so hopefully they're up and, and, and watching, but I want to go ahead and pass out offering envelopes this morning. 
Um, we want to just let you know that you can give. Now, we're still going to take up offering at the end. You're still going to just drop it in the buckets when you leave, but we just want to go ahead and pass those offering envelopes out this morning and just let you know how you can give this morning to Connect Church um, because you know what? We, we want to be blessing to people. Amen? You guys are quiet out there this morning. Come on. We want to be blessings to people, you know, and, and don't feel like that you're just giving to the church. Just know that you're giving through us. Just know that, that the money that you give, that we are, we are blessing families. And matter of fact, Fair and I were out last night. We had a call of somebody that said, hey, we just don't have any food. And Fair and I were like, well, we can't have that, <laughs> you know. And so we went and met them last night and uh, bought some food for some people. And so, you know, we just, man, that's just our heart. You know, our heart is just to help people. And so we have a couple of ways that you can give. We have our Venmo at Connect Church of Abilene. Um, you can go online and give, um, connectchurchofabilene.com. Just go to the give button and give that way, or you can give in the offering this morning. Um, but, man, we just, we just we want to be a blessing this year. We want to be a blessing this year. And so let's do that this year. So one more uh, announcement before we introduce... Um, we have our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Yes. I know y'all are, y'all are, y'all are like clapping for the prayer, but not so much about the fasting. I know that's how I am. Like, yeah, prayer. Oh, fasting. Yay. But I want to be honest with you guys. The fasting part will put you in a position, come on, to receive from God. Fasting doesn't move God, but it puts you in a mindset to receive from him. And I love what you said last week about Yeah. So I just, God was just giving me this vision. He reminded me of when Emily was younger, she played upward basketball. And I decided, oh, I can coach that. <laughs> and so I gave them, in upwards, they give you a color to tell them what position they are. And you would tell them, you're going to be this position, each one of them, and you send them out. And they just run everywhere. It's like... <laughs> It's That's true. not your position. And so God was telling me in this time of prayer and fasting that, you know, some of us, we may be told what our positions are or our purpose, but the prayer and our fasting is going to put us in alignment where our position is with him. We are seated where? Amen. At his Heavenly right place. hand. And so that's even going with your perspective. Perspective, yes. Perspective. perspective. If we're praying and getting per in from. I can't even talk today. If we're praying and getting in position, then we'll have our right perspective. We'll be up here seated with him, and we'll be able to go in this year of 2021 Amen. where we need to be going and what we need to be doing. And I so. love that because, you know, your positioning is where you receive. And I love when, when she said that last week because, you know, it's, it's so true because, you know, I've, I've coached a lot of different sports. We coached together on basketball uh, for Emily, I know that we've got a lot of people in here that have coached before. And, you know, if you coach the younger ones, it's like herding cats. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, flag football is like, you know, you just, you just kind of, to even get them, you know, to hike the ball is good, right? And so it's hard for anybody to do anything. You know, you have like one all-star on, on flag football, right? And you're just like, here. <laughs> you know, and everybody else is just like, hey, 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 I go to school with you, you know? <laughs> But you're not really in a position to receive anything. But coming into 2021, Fair and I as pastors want you to receive everything God's got for you in 2021. We want you to receive the blessings of God. We want you to receive the words of the Lord. And this prayer that we're going to do, this praying and fasting from January 3rd, which is a Sunday, we'll just have a regular service. And then we're actually going to have it here. We're actually going to, we've changed our location. We usually have it at our office. But God just kind of put on my heart this year that for us to pray over this facility, even though we don't own it, it's ours on Sunday mornings. Come on. And we're going to pray over this facility we're going to pray over Abilene. We're going to pray over our friends and family and just see God do something this year. And not only is God positioning you guys, come on, he's positioning the church. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, y'all weren't as excited as I am about that. God's positioning the church to do something this next year. God's positioning you guys within the church so the church can do what it needs to do. So I hope you guys understand that. You want to do it or you want me to? Drum roll. Where's, oh, Josh already left. So. <laughs> no, we just have somebody that has, um, if you haven't heard, um, we have a lady here that's going, that teaches every Sunday yes. to our children's department, just about to the, your kids and gives them wisdom and knowledge and just the love of Jesus just flows out of her to each and every one of our kids. So we invited her to speak today, Miss Amanda. Come on, y'all give her a hand clap this morning. (laughs) And I just hope you, um, every time I'm with her, I always receive some kind of wisdom, some kind of nugget that just always blesses me. And I know she'll bless you guys today too. She's a jokester, too. (laughs) Should have just let her fall if she was going. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) So we do. We absolutely love Amanda. And, you know, I hope you guys receive today because I know she's got something on her heart to share with us today. And today I'm just, I know God's going to move today. And you guys are going to receive and you guys watching online are going to receive today. And we are just blessed that you're here and that she accepted to, to speak and we're so thankful. So you guys give her a hand clap this morning. Thank you, Amanda. This little thing. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm really excited. I'm honored to be here. So thank you, Pastor Fair and Pastor Adam, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I usually don't get to be in here because I'm typically out there. Um, and one of the things that's a little different out there than it is in here is we have snack time. And I find out y'all only do that on Communion Sunday, which isn't today. So I'm a little disappointed, but that's okay. We'll get through it, I promise. Um, But I am so excited to just kind of end the year with you guys. And I think this year is perfect to talk about it. Because I don't know if you guys are in a position like I have been for the past year of thinking, this year is taking forever, right? It's like, I just want it to be over. So for years, life has gone by so quickly and so fast, but for some reason, this one's taking forever, right? And so I want to talk to you guys about just those pieces, because I know in 2020, one of the things that we have experienced is we have experienced isolation. We've experienced job loss. Our businesses have been affected. Our families have been affected because we've been trapped in the same environment all day, every day when we've been quarantined more than once, right? And so we're learning a lot of new things and it's been really difficult. And my prayer for us today is this, that in the midst of 2020 and waiting the next five days for 2021, that we don't squander our time and the opportunity we have today, okay? And so one of the things, kind of a couple of lessons we've learned in 2020, we learned through virtual learning that some of us are never meant to be teachers and that teachers are grossly underpaid. Correct, parents? Right? Um, Some of us that are natural introverts have learned that we need people a lot more than we would like to acknowledge. Okay? Um, And then through the great toilet paper famine, we have learned that Charmin is a commodity, although we really haven't figured that one out yet. We're still working our way through that one, right? But what I hope is that in the midst of 2020, we can understand that in the midst of burdens, in the midst of crisis, that God is very present and very real, okay? So what I want you guys to do, I'm going to be in Matthew today. So that's the first book of the New Testament, and we're going to be in Matthew chapter 11. So if you got your Bibles, turn there. If you got your phones, click there. I'm scared that virtual Bibles are going to be like rolling the window down where nobody knows what that means. So we're turning, but we don't know, but that's okay. So we're going to be in Matthew chapter 11. And I just want to share some things that God has really placed on my heart just throughout this year. Okay. And so Matthew chapter 11, we're going to start in verse 25. Okay. And it says this, at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, 
that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, one of the things that I really want to dive into is I want to dive into the last three verses of that. But before we do that, there's a couple of things that I want to note, okay? First and foremost, one of the things that really jumps out to me when I read this, if I'm looking at verse 25, it says, at that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. And one of the things that God has just really laid on my heart and convicted me of is it's really easy, and what I have found is the enemy uses this issue of comparison to silence us. And what I want to tell you guys is I have spent so much time with these kids over here, and the reason this jumps out to me is our kids, our young people, our youth, experience God in a very different way than our adult minds let us sometimes. So a couple of months ago, we were in children's church, and I was talking um, kind of through our lesson, and we were talking about how do you tell your friends about Jesus? And so I've got like the curriculum, and I ask the first question, and I get blank stares. And all the kids are like, we don't know how to do that. And I'm like, oh, today's going to be busted, but that's all right. So I asked a different question. I said, can we tell our friends what Jesus has done for us, right? Right? And so all the kids are like, yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, so tell me what's Jesus done for you? And one by one, all these little hands go up. And you never know what kids are going to say, right? I'm pretty sure I prayed for a kid's pregnant cat that didn't exist one time. But that's okay. Um, but one of the little, um, there was two siblings. And they started telling a story about a life-altering accident that they had been in that required multiple surgeries for one of them and ongoing surgeries for several years. And this little boy's sister said, God saved my brother. Okay, and we're talking littles, little kids. And it was just this kind of aha moment, like these kids get it. And then the next little girl raised her hand. Um, and she said, I was swimming one time with my brother and there was a wasp. And she goes, and I said, God, don't let that wasp get me. And she goes, you'd be amazed, Miss Amanda, it didn't get me. <laughs> and I think sometimes what happens where it's different for our kids than it is us is we would be silent about the wasp because it's not as like life-altering, right? That our kids see God very different because to them a wasp is just as big as an accident. And so as we talk about this, I want you guys to understand that in 2020, your job may have been awesome. It may have let you stay home for nine months in pajamas, right? Whatever it may be, but that doesn't mean that God doesn't have something for you, okay? And so the next verse that I want to talk about real quickly, and this kind of jumped out to me last night as I was kind of reviewing things. Verse 26, it says, Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Verse 27, all things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And one of the things that jumped out to me last night that I never thought of, and there's other places in Scripture that talk about Jesus' is the only way, right? He's the way, the truth, and the life. And this is just a gentle reminder that, hey, Jesus is there, and he's the difference, He's the life-changing piece. And so I want you guys to kind of brain bank that as we go through and really look and break down these last three verses, okay? So in Matthew chapter 11, we'll pick up verse 28. And Jesus says, it's red letters, so that's Jesus, right? He says, come to me, all who labor 
and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so I did some kind of digging on this verse and kind of looking at some of the language that's used. And the language that Jesus used and the language that the writer was so intentional in capturing, when he used the word, come to me, it's not past tense. It's not dependent on time. It means now. It doesn't mean, hey, come to me when you have your life figured out. Come to me when your world's not falling apart. Next week looks good. Hey, we got about four and a half days left. 2021's looking pretty good. It says now. And not only does it say now for the immediacy, it also talks about the availability because it doesn't stop. So it's easy that we look at scripture and it's like, well, yeah, Jesus said that to them, but it's ongoing to us as well. And so what Jesus is saying is, come to me now. I'm available, I'm here. Jesus doesn't have office hours where he's on holiday leave. He's very present and very real now. And so my fear is, if we lose sight of that, we will squander the next five days, much like some of us have done all year, right? Some of us have dug our heels in and we are waiting for 2020 to be over to get things right. And God's saying, I'm available now. Life change is available now. Perspective change is available now. Hope is now. And so I want us to kind of grasp that as we go through that. And so when he talks about come to me, he's giving us an invitation, but he's also offering us something. He's offering us rest. Okay? And so a couple of words I want to look at when he talks about those who labor and are heavy laden. When I see the word labor, I always think of work. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we work. You know, no big deal. We deal with kids, whatever, we, whatever circumstances we're dealing with, right? But the word labor that's used here in the Greek is kapiao, okay? And this isn't talking about work, and it's not talking about serving. It means to grow weary, tired, and exhausted with burdens. To fill the fatigue of burdens. And I think in 2020, that's our reality for a lot of us. And if we're honest and transparent, I think that was my reality in 2020, or 2019, and maybe 2018. And maybe I've been carrying some of those burdens from years ago. And so I think it's really important that we grasp, when it talks about labor, it's not talking about, man, I had a long day. It's talking about the weight on, of the world on our shoulders and we can't carry it, okay? And so the rest that Jesus is offering us is anapao. And I want to read these definitions to you only because I think it really grasps a really good picture. And when he's talking about rest, it's to cause or permit one to cease from any movement or labor in order to recover and collect his strength, to give rest, refresh, give oneself rest and take rest, to keep quiet of calm and patient expectation. And one of the things that I have found is I have been waiting for this year. I've been waiting for circumstances to change. I've been waiting for something to happen. But I haven't been resting in patient expectation that God will show up and that he will show out. And my prayer for us today is that we can grasp a hold of that, that we can move from a place of being weary and move to a place where we are refreshed and we are patiently expecting God to move in mighty ways. Today, tomorrow, next week, next year, whatever that may look like. And one of the things that I've found is a lot of times I get really tied up in myself. And it's kind of that perspective that Adam and Pharaoh were talking about. That when life is happening, I get real wound up in looking at this is the issue, right? When I'm stressed, I don't handle things well, right? When I'm stressed, sometimes the car keys end up in the fridge, because I'm just not thinking clear, because my perspective is wrong, because I'm focused on other things. And one of the things that I want us to know is that our circumstances do not change the character and the promises of God. They magnify it. So when we read these scriptures and we're talking about God showing up and giving us rest, that's not a one-time thing that's present. If we go back to the Old Testament, and you guys don't have to turn there 
But if we go to the minor prophets, if we go to Zephaniah, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It's Zephaniah 317. And this is years before Jesus. Years and years before. And this is what it says. This is one of my favorites. It says, the Lord your God is in your midst. So he's present, right? A mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love and exult over you with loud singing. It's in God's character to give us peace. It's in God's character to give us rest. And it's in God's character to be very present and very real. Okay? And so as we move through, we're going to continue just breaking down Matthew. One of the things that I want to talk about is we find rest. If we look in verse 29, this is what verse 29 tells us. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And so one of the things that's used here is a yoke. And some of us, and it's not like an egg yoke. Like, I have an accent, so it sounds the same, okay? But a yoke is something that was used, like, way back when, if you think Little House on the Prairie, right? So it was used with cattle or ox to help carry things, to do things, whether it was a plow, whether it was supplies, whatever it may be, okay? And a yoke was meant to break you. A yoke was meant to tie you down to carry something, to carry a load. And what Jesus is telling us here is take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And so I did some research on the process of training cattle to use a yoke, okay? Because I'm one of those people and I'm weird. And this is how it was done. What would happen is you would have an ox that knew what they were doing, right? And then you would have one that was new, that had never done it before, that probably wasn't the smartest, might have been stubborn, whatever it may be. And they yoked them together. But you never yoked two that had no clue what they were doing, okay? Because that would be a disaster. And so what they would do is they would yoke two oxen together, and that was kind of the wood piece that went over their back to keep them together, where they would bear the weight on their shoulders. And the reason they trained them like that is the one that knew what they were doing would carry the load until the other one learned to walk in step. And so when I read this, the conviction that I find in my life is that there are times where I get overwhelmed and I get real in my head and I know God's telling me that there's things for me and things I need to do and I get overwhelmed at times and it's a lot. But what I found is I get overwhelmed and find it's a lot when I'm not in my lane, when I step outside and I'm working against the design that God has for me. Okay? And so as we talk about getting rest and learning from him, it's learning to walk in step. It's learning to walk in what God has laid out for us, okay? Which takes us directly to verse 30. And this is the awesome part. This is the part I love, okay? Verse 30 says this, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, one thing that I know is when we hear the word easy, if you're anything like me, I get excited because I like things that are easy. But I think the word easy, sometimes we feel it's used synonymously with like stress-free, right? Easy, like I ain't got to worry about anything. But the word that's used in the Greek for easy is krestos, and it's this, fit for use or manageable, And so I think we struggle because we want it to be struggle-free. But easy isn't struggle-free, it's manageable. And it's only manageable when he's carrying the load. Okay? Because a part of training an ox to walk in step is you never trained one to be on the left side and then moved them to the right. And you never trained one to be on the right side and then moved them to the left. They had to stay in their position. They had to stay in their lane. And if I'm honest, the things about 2020 that stress me out, that are too much to bear, the loads that I can't carry, are when I decide I've got this. It's when I'm impatient. It's when I think I've got it on my own and I can do it on my own. And when I do that, I put myself in a position to carry a load that I am not designed to carry. 
And so in this year, in this day, I really want you to kind of just self-reflect and figure out, are you in that position? Are you in that lane? Or are you carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders? Because you were never designed to. And I think in 2020, we have put ourselves in a position, and some of us have set our lives up to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. Because if we don't, who's going to? But what we find in these verses that we've really broken down is the weight of the world, the stress, the fear, it's not ours to carry. When we walk in step with Jesus, who is the only way, he carries the load, he carries the burden as we continually learn to walk in step and to stay in our lane. And that's the best part. That's where things happen. That's where freedom's found. That in the waiting for something to change, in the waiting for our business to succeed, in the waiting for our adult children to taste and see the goodness of God, in the waiting for our marriage to be healed, God is very present in carrying those burdens and all he's asking us to do is walk in step and to stay in our lane, right? And so as we think about that, what I really hope is that we can not only see and find rest in our weariness, to learn to walk in step and find peace and freedom when we lay those things down at the feet of Jesus because that's where the peace is at when we're not carrying it. What I want us to be able to see is that we can rest in knowing God is working in our waiting. He is everything in our waiting, okay? When we're yoked together with him, when we walk in step with him, Everything changes. Everything. It's when the wounds become weapons, when the damaged becomes beautiful, when the broken become strong, when the weak become leaders, when the lonely become loved, okay? When the addicted become focused, when the anxious become rooted, when the timid, scared, and fearful become bold, courageous, and rooted, when he is faithful, that's when and where freedom is found. So as we are sitting, waiting for this year to end, waiting for something to change, waiting for someone to change, please understand, Jesus is gently telling you, come to me, come to me now. Now, not later, not after five days when you make your New Year's resolution that you're going to stick to for three days and then it's too hard, right? Some of us don't even bother making them because we know ourselves, but it's now. There's an immediacy to it and there's availability to it. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand, and Javi, you can come back up if you want to. Um, did I break something? Uh, <laughs> if y'all know me, y'all know it's true. Um, but one of the things that I want you guys to understand is there's a lot of us in this room that have never put ourselves in position to find rest. That we have attempted over and over to do it on our own. And I know and I've been praying that the Holy Spirit is guiding you this week. That he is putting something in your heart which got you here today. And that's not by accident. And so if you're sitting here today, God has something for you. And so there's two specific groups of people I want to pray for as we close out. So if you guys will bow your heads, close your eyes. The first group of people I want to pray for and pray with, if you have found yourself in a position where you've never gone through this process, where it sounds all good on paper, but you've never really surrendered to Jesus, and that's a decision you want to make today, that you want to invite him to transform your life, I want to give you that opportunity. So if God is urging you to take that next step, to surrender your life to him, every head's bowed, every eye is closed, will you simply just raise your hand so that we can pray for you? Okay. Thank you. The second group of people I want to pray for is I want to pray for the group 
that has tasted the goodness of God and has decided to take over those burdens for themselves again. Because I think we all find ourselves in that similar place of, okay, so if that's you, raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So if you've made that decision for the first time, this is what I'm gonna ask you to do. We're gonna pray, and I want you guys to repeat after me, because we don't do life alone at Connect Church of Abilene, okay? And the prayer is very simple. So if you'll just repeat after me. Jesus, we thank you for stirring in our hearts. And we thank you that you came down and sacrificed your life. And I surrender my heart and I surrender my life and I'm asking you to change me. Amen. Now, this is what I'm gonna ask you to do. We're not gonna embarrass anybody, but we want you guys to take one more step. If that was a prayer for you and God is moving in your life, we have a very simple process and it's not meant to embarrass you, but it's meant to plug you into resources. So if that's the first time you've prayed that prayer, or if it's the 30th and you just had to get things right with God, we're gonna ask that you simply send a text message. We want you to text yes, number two, Jesus, to 97,000. And that's just so we can connect with you and provide you resources. We're not gonna show up randomly at your house, okay? We're not gonna like put you on the list where you get all the junk mail ever possible. We're not those kind of people. But we wanna just plug you in so you can take that next step, okay? And this is what I know about next steps. And I'm not talking just about our next step class that Pastor Adam and Farah talked about. I'm talking about how God is continually urging us to take one more step in step with him, okay? And for some of us, that next step may be just sharing our story. Because the word says they overcome by the blood of the lamb, which is Jesus, and the word of our testimony. And the next step for some of us is opening our mouth and sharing our story because God can use that in mighty ways in people's lives. For some of us, the next step that God is urging us to is to make things right with our family. Some of us, we got some things to make right, and that might be what God is urging you to do. For some of you, your next step could be as we enter January and connect groups kick back off, is walking through life with a group of people that love you, that'll pray for you, that'll struggle with you, that will rejoice with you, and will celebrate with you. And maybe that's what God's urging you to, okay? But what I want you guys to know is don't squander the opportunity to take your step, okay? For some of you, your next step, Adam talked about 21 days of prayer. And one of the things that we've always had is we've had these red cards. And if you've been here before, you've seen them. Some of you steal them to take notes on them and that's okay, we'll allow it. But these are our prayer cards. And some of you, it's stepping out and telling somebody that you need prayer telling people, I need you to stand in agreement with me that God would change my situation. And it's simply writing your prayer on our prayer card and dropping it in the box. And that might be the next step. Some of you, it might be figuring out a way that come January, you get up early and you make it to 21 days of prayer. But this is what I know about God. And this is what I've experienced, is that next step is always worth it. That God blesses our obedience and he shows up and he shows out. And so he's simply asking us to walk in step with him. Okay. Will you guys pray with me? God, I thank you for who you are and what you've done in our lives. I thank you that you are stirring in us a desire to walk in step with you. God, we come to you and we confess that we have squandered 2020, worried about things and focused on things that aren't you. We ask that you would move in mighty ways in our life. We ask that you would bring people to us, that we would go to people 
and be an encouragement as you give us rest as we go into the next hour and into the next day refreshed. Father, we confess that we have carried burdens that are not ours to carry, and we ask that you would heal our hearts and heal our minds, and we ask that you would drown us in truth because the truth is those burdens we try and want to carry aren't ours to carry. We love you and we praise your name. Amen. We want to thank you guys um, for being with us um, today, for joining us online. Um, and we're going to ask, you know, if you've got a prayer card, fill it out. We are here for you. We will wait a little bit before we start tearing stuff down. Um, if you need more information, things like that, we do have tables outside as well. And I know some of you, this may be your first time here, and we are so glad you were here. And we want to tell you welcome home. And if this is your first time, we have something for you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to ask for a ton of ridiculous information. We just want to tell you welcome home. So outside these doors, you'll find a table. And we have something that we want to, we want to give you. Some homemade deliciousness from Miss Gail. So if this is your first time here, we're going to ask that you just go visit our table right outside these doors to the right. Um, just so we can meet you. Um, and love on you. And so we thank you guys. Um, if you are all about snack time, and that sounds good to you also, we would love to talk with you about joining our kids team. I couldn't be up here without making a plug. Um, so, but we thank you guys. Y'all have a great week. Um, make good choices. I don't know. That's what I tell my boys. Um, so thank y'all so much.